Hey, it's Pastor David. I'm here with my Thursday at three update. And today I want to share with you three numbers at First United Methodist Church of Winter Park. And the first number is 4.8%. Let me get this screen up here for us. I'd love to share with you these numbers. And so here we go. The first number has to do with the increase in attendance in December between 2022 and 2021. So I have here the grid and you'll see the comparisons both in person and online and the total number. And you'll see in December, in November of 2022, we had a total of 629 folks attending worship on Sunday morning uh, or throughout the week online and versus 514 in 2021. December, of course, the first three weeks, we're counting the first three weeks because of the way Christmas Eve fell, 845 worship with us as opposed to 806 in 2021. And I've added the Christmas Eve numbers and the celebration of 500 more folks joining us, 400, 300 and 400 more folks joining us on Christmas Eve in 2022 as a 2021, the 500 figure being 500 more people in person. So a couple of things about these numbers. First, there's growth. Super excited that we're heading the right way. Uh, that we have more people attending and more people attending in person. And these numbers second represent a pretty much comparable to our attendance figures in 2019, our pre-pandemic. It's a little tricky. Uh, our online numbers are difficult to measure. Uh, we have decided at our church to count each view as one person. Could be a family of three, could be a family of five, but we count it as one to offset those that don't watch all the way through. So we count if you watch for 20 minutes, you watch for 60 minutes as one person. And that's kind of where we land. It could be more. We, we're not entirely sure. But put that together, they're, they're pretty much even with what our numbers were pre-pandemic. Second, it says to me that we have still a very healthy online community of people worshiping with us. And those numbers have lessened, obviously, as more people come back, but there's still a pretty significant number of folks, hundreds of people that are watching online, uh, even as we begin 2023. Now, third, it tells me as I watch the numbers go up in December, it's something that I see in worship, which is that we have a fairly sizable winter uh, snowbird group of folks in our family that come and visit us for half a year and are with us and then stay with us online uh, uh, throughout the rest of the year. And that, that always uh, shows up in this season between Christmas and Easter. And finally, it really raises a question for me. One of the questions that I'm hearing a lot, one of the questions that I've been wrestling with a lot these days is, who is the church and where is the church? I mean, who, who do we see as a part of the church? If I worship online, and I regularly and I uh, give to the church and I participate in a group with the church uh, through the study online and say, I don't even live here. Am I a part of the church? Well, absolutely. You are. Absolutely. If I'm a part of a Bible study that meets here on Thursday morning, but I'm not a part of the worshiping community on Sunday morning, am I a part of the church? Well, absolutely. You are. So, you know, worship and the church doesn't just happen at 9 or 11 at the corner of Interlochen and Morse. And so we're struggling with how do we how do we begin to minister to, account for, uh, uh, be a church that is not just at one location at one time. And that continues to be raised in this season. All right, second number that I want to share with you is 325. This is significant to me because we're not just thinking about numbers. Numbers represent people. We're not just thinking about people here for worship, you know, fannies in the pews, uh, we're really thinking about people that are part of the family and how they participate. And one of the ways that we look at that is if they're participating outside of worship on Sunday or online, if they're participating in a smaller community doing life together. And we see that we've had a significant increase from 2021 to 2022. And this is so important because a smaller community is what the scripture teaches. This is what Jesus taught. This is what Jesus modeled, that we do this faith together, that we have others that uh, bring accountability, that bring encouragement and love, uh, bring support into our lives, that, that lead us and help us grow into, into more likeness of Christ, that become mirrors for each other in this 
this journey of being a Jesus follower. And so we're, we're really pushing right now, folks, to, to be a part of a smaller community outside of just sitting in worship in that broader community on Sunday or online. And, and so I'm really encouraged that we're seeing significant growth from last year, you know, 2021 to 2022. And we, we are making plans and pushing for even greater numbers in 2023. One of the ways we measure life together is how we care for each other. And we have a, a meeting every Tuesday with all the pastors and with several lay leaders who go through the list of, of those that we need to care for. And it's a really uh, moving, profound kind of system that works through caring for each other. And one of the things that we do in that overall umbrella is a, a wonderful ministry called Grief Share. Grief Share is a gathering of a small community of folks that are going through a season of grief. It might be grief from the loss of a spouse. It might be the grief from the loss of a parent or a child. You know, it just, just this opportunity and a point of vulnerability to grief to come together and encourage one another. And I just am so thankful for uh, Linda Langa and Bill Walker and Nancy Cruz, who, who, who have been leading this uh, last year. We started in the fall with seven. This spring, this winter, this spring, we have 11. So significant growth in those that are coming and being on this path together. Those are three numbers, 4.8, 3.25, 11. I've added one more number, 796. That is the number of weekly emails that are opened each week from our church. Uh, we send out a lot of information from our family. We want people to be informed. In this world, in this age, it, a lot of it's digital. And um, we primarily put a lot of the church knowledge into the Monday and Thursday emails. If you want to know what's happening in the church, be sure to sign up for the Monday and Thursday emails. And so we send us out, about 46% of them are open each week. That's 700, almost 800 family units open our emails from the church every week. I was, I was kind of blown away by the number of folks that do that. And so that's another sign for me of connection. People that want to know, want to be a part of. Uh, there, there is lots available, uh, devotions, updates like this video, children's emails, youth emails, uh, posts from missions, serving opportunities. And so I just end with a couple of invitations. And the first is if you do not receive a weekly email from our church, particularly Monday or Thursday, please sign up so that you can be informed and be invited. You do that through Connect, uh, which is our realm, which is our database, uh, basically church book. And uh, you, or you can call church office and we'll be glad to get you connected that way. And you can control how many of those weekly emails you want to receive. And you are in the driver's seat for that, but it is really the primary source of leading to deeper connection. If you are not in a smaller group, if you're just joining us online or in a broad group of worship, please come and join us, particularly in the season of our new series in Revelation. You can find those at fumcwp.org. We have a sheet on the at the back door of worship each week, or you can call me and I would love to help you get connected. Finally, if you uh, have an idea, if you have thoughts about what it means to be a church in this digital age, in this age where we are not at low location at one time, when we are much broader than the people we see. I would love to hear from you. We're, we're heading into a new season, a new land as a church. And this is a time for us to continually seek to do the best we can. And so I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to seeing you in church on Sunday. In the meantime, God bless.